was at an international service conference for youth when I realized I was part of a movement. The opening session felt like a rock concert with neon lights and blaring music. Youth of all ages were sporting t-shirts with slogans like, be the change and making the impossible possible, proving that great acts of service can only be marked by equally great t-shirts. As ordinary youth took the stage and shared their innovative solutions to global issues, I was awestruck as their auras seemed to light up the room. I had been involved in community service my whole life without realizing the world needed me. But after this conference, my freshman year of college, I began to think seriously about global issues and decided to study abroad in Nairobi, Kenya. When I received a fellowship a year later to teach in a high school for orphans in Western Kenya, I was eager to return, not as a student, but as a change maker, like the youth I'd met at the conference. I left for Kenya determined to fix something, anything. While teaching, I realized quite quickly I was in over my head. I tried to encourage my students to think differently about issues like gender equality and environmental sustainability and how those issues could be best addressed in their communities. A few of my students seemed interested, but the vast majority weren't engaged at all. That's because outside the classroom, my students' personal aspirations went far beyond anything I could have imagined. Purity, for example, a first-year student who showed up to school at the crack of dawn every morning just to sneak in a few more hours of studying, dreamed of becoming a lawyer. George, a first-year student who frequently stayed after class to debate foreign policy with me, dreamed of becoming a neurosurgeon. My students didn't need inspiration or models for changing their communities. They were the models. I couldn't help feel like I was missing something. When would my philanthropic stroke of genius occur? When would my big breakthrough happen? I continued teaching an idealistic curriculum, and on the last day of school, I met with the headmaster for dinner. I was expecting a quick recap of my work, and then I'd be sailing off into the sunset, riding a wave of compassion and euphoria all the way home. But as I entered the restaurant, the headmaster didn't even look up from the pile of papers in front of him. What have you accomplished since you've been here? He asked in a serious tone. I started listing off the skills and lessons I taught my students, but he held up his hand to stop me. Your organization in America has spent thousands of dollars on your airfare and accommodations since you've been here. Yet I haven't seen any investment in giving our students tangible things. Your work is mafia kekechea. I'm sorry I asked, unsure of the Swahili word. Kindergarten shit. No one had ever told me to my face that I was wasting my time. And unlike what I'd come to believe, it wasn't the thought that counted. I had been operating under the assumption that because I was doing something, it was clearly better than doing nothing. This is a similar mentality that many other volunteers adopt. We think of ourselves secretly as superheroes with magic powers, and the ability to right wrongs in any situation. But we give ourselves too much credit for being individuals out to make good. What's really remarkable about volunteering isn't when you're one or two people, but when you're part of a network. We have to recognize this in order for the network to take strategic action towards addressing community needs. Over the course of the Colorado floods, We've seen incredible acts of service as neighbors, 
police, fire, and city employees mobilized to save lives. Their efforts have been successful because they have collected, listened to, and responded to rapid feedback. As we start to rebuild our communities and focus on relief efforts, we must continue working side by side and block by block. Ultimately, the messages we cling to as volunteers must shift. On stages like this, instead of elevating the individual, we must remember to celebrate true community partnerships. Ultimately, if we collaborate, there's no way our work will be kindergarten shit. Thank you.